Hello, welcome back to Go and Walkabout. Today's episode, I'm going to talk about locally developing and debugging Firestore triggers. Back in episode 15, I introduced Firestore triggers into the project. They are really useful and I really love using them. They're very handy to make sure that your database is up to date, but the developer experience is not very good. That's what I also mentioned back then. Now, ever since, Google introduced a new emulator and it's making stuff a little bit easier. Today, I'm going to show you my way of working with the new emulator. And for that, we first now go to Visual Studio Code and I'll show you the setup of my project. Now, here in Visual Studio Code, you can see I have a Firebase project and inside the Firebase project, I have functions and I have tests. The functions are the actual definitions of my Firestore trigger functions. So they act on the database. So let's have a look at one that we're going to use in this test as well. So if I have a trip and then on the create of a trip, we see here I want to keep an aggregate of the number of trips that a certain user has created. So it's very simple. This function triggers on the create of a trip. Uh, I get the user, what is the owner of the trip in most cases, um, from the trip data and then I get the user collection and I update, I increment the field value trips. So in order to test this, we traditionally would write this function, upload it, and then, you know, let's feel lucky and we'll see at the results. I have figured out a way to run this locally, but before we show you that, I will first go into the documentation in order how to do that. So if we go to the Firebase documentation, we see the cloud functions, we can run the folk functions locally and we run the emulators. So we're going to run the emulators and then it also explains how to interact with other services. So if you have cloud functions that use the admin functionality, they are actually triggering other stories. That's what's written here. If you have cloud functions that use the Firebase admin SDK to write Cloud Firestore, these writes will send to the Cloud Firestore emulating if it's running. If further cloud functions are triggered by those writes, they will run into the cloud functions emulator. Now that is exactly what we want because that way we can trigger the functions locally. So that's what I'm going to show you, how I figured out to do that and how I do it. It's not yet perfect, but it's a big improvement over the old way of doing stuff. So back here in Visual Studio Code, I have uh, two terminal windows. One where I'm going to run the Firebase emulator as said by the documentation, and we'll see it is starting, and it is actually initializing all my functions. You see the on-delete, the on-create functions I created. It also says for testing, set your Firestore emulator host is localhost. If you don't do this, the uh, executed function that you wrote as the admin SDK will go to the real database. You don't want that, you want it to go to this emulator. So in order to set this, we set in this window an ex export of that particular code so that our environment is set. Now this terminal is pointing out to a folder with tests that I wrote and those tests they're unfortunately not real unit tests, but I do use just to run them, but that is just from convenience. Because I cannot mock the database at this stage, I have to run it against the real emulator with, let's say, real data that sort of gets persisted, etc. And that also involves issues with timing, but at least it's a way forward and at least it's a good start uh, for running these tests. So I created very simple first init test and that init test it will actually just create a user because it goes to the user collection it will uh, look if it exists if it doesn't exist it sets it with user data so i get my first user then it runs a second test where it does exactly the same but for a trip i need one user one trip and creating this trip that's what we'll do should fire actually my um database function that we just saw earlier that will increase the number of trips into that particular user record. Now when I create that user record I have some data here that user only has a name and the bio so there is no trips flag whatsoever but we will see that we will create this when this starts running. 
Now, then the test continues also with creating, uh, after the trip, a follower of the trip, because that's the way my database is structured. And that should also trigger an update of, because I create a follower, so the number of followers in the trip should be created. And then here's the last part, I do a bit of verification, where I say that the user has one trip, so I retrieve the user again, I check if it exists, and then I check if the trip's value contains one. And I do the same for the follower. So let's go and run this test. So what I do is here, I, uh, I run my initial test. And when this is running, we will see here that the functions are getting triggered. And they're running. And I actually have a failure now. And the failure is that I have here latency. And that is a bit of a problem here. Database function, the trigger that has to update these followers, hasn't executed yet. It has been running here slowly. Now, I do wait before I do this verification, but that wait is not always too long. And this is still a bit inconvenient, but I can run it again, because the trip is built in such a way that I can do it again. And, and now it should execute properly because uh, it just all needed to warm up a little bit and it should run perfectly. And now you also see that my user has one trip passed and my user has one follower passed. Next step is to look at the data. And for that, I also wrote a little bit of a uh, function that will show me some results and I'll make the screen a little bit uh, bigger because it is still cryptic, but for me, it is something that is very useful. This is my user. Is by testing and it has one trip. That's the value that is updated by the function. And I have notifications, they're not really relevant. I have my trip that is created that has one follower. That's another value that's updated with my database trigger. And uh, I have followers. Now, if you work this way, at least you don't need to upload and you can run it directly from your workstation and you can also make changes directly because Let's go to that particular function that we had earlier here, the trip on create. If, for instance, I make a typing mistake here, it will immediately re, let's say, um, evaluate the function and it will see that there's a mistake. So you can fix it immediately and you can also immediately put some additional errors here and uh, working. Now, I haven't figured out how to really debug this because it is run by the emulator and for some reason I cannot attach a debugger to that. Well, if someone knows, I would like to hear that because it would even be better to do that. But I can put in log statements very quickly, have an immediate result. I don't need to restart the emulator to do that and it is really helpful to um, yeah, develop these functions. For me, this has been a really big time saver and um, makes it a lot easier and more convenient to uh, develop these functions. Of course, you still need to test them out in the field because eh, things might behave a little bit different, but at least you don't need to go through that, you know, write some code, upload, wait until it is uploaded and compiled, test and redo that cycle again. You can be much quicker doing this locally. Now, that is the most important thing I did. I wrote quite a bunch of tests that I'm very aware that are not real tests in the sense of unit tests, but at least they help me developing and I can do a lot of additional checks here. And I also have been able to improve my functions in terms of uh, efficiency because I can shorten that whole uh, release cycle quite a bit. I hope you like this video. If you like, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like the video, the next one might be better for you, so subscribe anyway. And I'll see you in the next video. I'll thank you for watching.